in his career because even though with how much Lesnar has conquered in his career there is still so much more for Lesnar to achieve I mean where is things that Lesnar has not accomplished in his career that are left off of his already very impressive resume now his resume has gotten far more impressive since his return in 2012 and I think the second half of Lesnar's career has really defined Lesnar for being a legend in professional wrestling I mean ever since his return he defeated the Undertaker at WrestleMania he defeated every Paul Heyman guy in the way of a CM Punk in a big show and he went on to become WWE World Heavyweight Champion in the fall of WrestleMania 30 and his win over The Undertaker the first time in two decades nearly over two decades The Undertaker was defeated at WrestleMania and the biggest thing they had to follow up with that is Lesnar to become champion dominating in a performance against John Cena and he would continue to dominate in performances against John Cena month after month every single time he defended the championship and here's the thing about Lesnar's previous reign as WWE World Heavyweight Champion I mean how many times did Lesnar actually defend the championship against someone rather than John Cena. Pretty much the majority, over 75 through 80 percent of Lesnar's previous reign as champion, involved him feuding with John Cena over the championship. He had one other opponent that was Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 31 before the match was turned into a triple threat match and WWE were victims of false advertising in my opinion. And now Lesnar has a different opponent altogether with Seth Rollins because the authority allows that Seth Rollins is ready for an opponent like Brock Lesnar. And this is a very interesting poll that we could throw up on our website. It got me to thinking, is Seth Rollins really ready to face someone like Brock Lesnar, a man who's defeated The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30 last year? I mean, is this the biggest thing you have for Seth, for uh, Brock Lesnar after defeating The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30 last year? I mean, give me a break. Facing Seth Rollins for the championship with Seth Rollins being the defending champion, this is the biggest thing you have for Brock Lesnar, supposedly one of your biggest names in the follow of last year's WrestleMania having defeated The Undertaker. I mean, really, this is really ridiculous, and I'm sure a lot a lot of wrestling fans, I think I speak for a lot of you when I say this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Brock Lesnar defeats the mighty Undertaker at WrestleMania 30, someone that uh, was never defeated in over two decades plus, and now he loses to Seth Rollins, and Rollins is the defending champion in the fallout of everything that happened for Lesnar within the last year to year and a half. I mean, this is absolutely atrocious, and it shouldn't be happening. So really, this match can be looked at as a mismatch, with uh, Seth Rollins giving up a significant amount of size and power to Brock Lesnar, who literally in a real knockdown drag him out brawl would destroy Seth Rollins, and Rollins probably wouldn't have a chance of winning this match. Now the variables in favor of Seth Rollins could be one being Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman turning on Brock Lesnar and playing the heel card as the new manager and uh, representative of Seth Rollins in the future of WWE with Brock Lesnar and John Cena chasing after Rollins for the championship, probably Roman Reigns in a fatal four-way scenario. That would be really interesting if you have Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins in a fatal four-way match, say by Night of Champions, to determine the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, having John Cena chasing after his 16th championship, which was the initial plan for WWE to have John Cena chasing after Rollins for the championship, but they kept John Cena on the bench to allow people like Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar to step up their game, which they did do, but they weren't rewarded for it. Lesnar was suspended. Reigns was taken out of the title picture completely altogether and feuds with people like Bray Wyatt which made no sense to me at all and now we're back to Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins square one from Wrestlemania earlier this year and it's taken them three months to put this one off. Here's the thing about Lesnar 2 being champion which leads me to believe that Lesnar probably doesn't have a chance of winning this match and coming out of it as champion. Even if he wins he'll probably win by disqualification or count because you got to keep in mind this match is not a no holds barred match it's not a street, a street fight or an ODQ match. The champion's advantage does apply to Seth Rollins, so Lesnar could win as a result of a countout or a disqualification with Seth Rollins more than likely getting himself disqualified and either setting up for another opponent for Lesnar to, for uh, Seth Rollins to have by SummerSlam or another match between the two. So champion's advantage does apply out of Seth Rollins. And here's the issue I have with Lesnar being champion. If Lesnar's going to be champion for a second time, as WWE World Heavyweight Champion winning his fourth championship in the duration of his career. Uh, Lesnar has to be there more as a champion and as far as I'm concerned if you're not there all the time you shouldn't be champion. But the issue here with Lesnar being champion is WWE realizes the numbers it will get for subscribers on the network, the pay-per-view buy rates they will achieve and the TV ratings they'll get if Lesnar has to make appearances cutting promos, doing commentary, promoting matches for pay-per-views and wrestling once a month on pay-per-view and also with the champion not being there all the time, it kind of presents a 1990s feel, in my opinion, when people like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart were champion and they weren't there all the time, nor were they wrestling all the time. It was very rarely you would see the champion.
Champion Wrestling on editions of One Hour of Monday Night Raws back in the 90s, and that made you more excited to tune in to watch Monday Night Raw. So when we know the champion and the way Brock Lesnar is going to be there, we're going to watch Raw more than we are when Lesnar is not there and doing pre-recorded videos and pre-recorded interviews to do promos for matches coming up at pay-per-view. So by keeping the champion's appearances limited, you're uh, only improving your television ratings, you're boosting the ratings, and you're boosting the morality of WWE and the excitement and the unpredictable factor of when the champion's going to show up, how the champion's going to present himself, and what the champion is going to do. Because Lesnar has this switch in his mind, in my opinion, that you don't know when it's going to be turned on and Lesnar's going to click and Lesnar's going to go off on whoever he's facing or whoever he has an issue with. And I think that if Paul Heyman were to play the heel card on Brock Lesnar, that would make Lesnar far more unpredictable than what Lesnar is now. And also Lesnar being champion now playing the fan favorite card uh, would be awesome too because Lesnar has explosive reactions when he comes out as a fan favorite. Fans want to see Brock Lesnar tear uh, Seth Rollins limb from limb. And if they get that, they're going to get something to be very proud of because they're waiting on Lesnar to do this. And they're waiting on Lesnar to really emerge in WWE and go to the top of the business, which he can do as a fan favorite. It brings me back to when Lesnar was chasing after the championship near the end of 2002, going into WrestleMania 19 and his program with Kurt Angle. He was the fan favorite. He got explosive reactions, and he continued to get explosive reactions after beating Kurt Angle in the fall of WrestleMania 19. And Kurt Angle had to go away with a neck injury and have neck surgery for a couple of months after WrestleMania, and Lesnar continued to become more popular. By July of 2003, Kurt Angle made his return, took the strap back off of Brock Lesnar. Lesnar went back to being a heel character, aligned himself with people like uh, Vince McMahon, what an alliance to have, and went on to achieve far greater things in his career. But the thing is, Lesnar got explosive reactions as a fan favorite, so this is a good move. Just as good of a move when they turn Sheamus into a fan favorite before having him go back playing the heel card. I think this is a great move, having Brock Lesnar being the fan favorite, going into his match with Seth Rollins, provided what happens in the conclusion of this match. But my prediction now has changed from Lesnar to Seth Rollins, because Seth Rollins, in my opinion, has become the JBL of the new talent technician. Remember when JBL was the champion, and he found creative ways all the time to retain the championship and get out of pay-per-view title defenses against the likes of The Undertaker, The Big Show, and Eddie Guerrero. He always found a creative way to win. And Seth Rollins is kind of pattering himself, in my opinion, after JBL, the wrestling god, a wrestling legend, as the Houdini of the new talent, just as JBL was back in the early thousands. And that makes Seth Rollins a far more unpredictable champion than what he ever was when he first won the championship. And as long as he keeps coming up with creative ways to escape title match after title match, on pay-per-view or WWE house shows, it makes the champion more fun to watch. And the same thing can apply to anyone who's champion in the way of a Roman Reigns, a John Cena, a Brock Lesnar, even an Undertaker or a Triple H. As long as they find creative ways of winning and give us ways to talk about them in far better ways than what we probably have in recent months, I think that makes for better t television ratings and pay-per-view buy rates for WWE, which is why I'm more excited to see what Lesnar's going to do in the fallout of WrestleMania 31, knowing what happened to him and announcing publicly that he's re-signed with WWE, and this is something to keep in mind. Lesnar has announced that he is re-signed with WWE, which makes the next few months very unpredictable because we don't know who Lesnar's going to be facing over the next few months, whether he's champion or not. We don't know if he's going to be champion. We don't know who he's going to be facing, and we don't know what Lesnar's role is going to be at WrestleMania 32 next year in Dallas. How about Brock Lesnar versus Sting and Sting's return match for the first time since his match with Triple H, which he lost, and here comes Sting to kind of rekindle his career and beats Brock Lesnar in one of the main events of next year's WrestleMania. How about Brock Lesnar not regaining the championship on Till WrestleMania 32, what's his role going to be at the event where you expect Brock Lesnar to be at his best and be having one of his greatest matches of his career every year? WrestleMania is usually the time Lesnar shines and shines brighter than anybody on the new talent that used to roster or any legend who appears on the WrestleMania card because that's the way Lesnar wants it and that's the way Lesnar usually gets it. So I'm looking forward to finding out whether or not Lesnar is going to be champion at WrestleMania 32, if he'll regain the championship not until WrestleMania 32, or who in fact he will face at WrestleMania 32. These are questions we need answers to, and we need to find out what the creative direction is for Brock Lesnar. Is he going to play the fan favorite card over the next few months with Paul Heyman aligning himself with Seth Rollins and this new Japan wrestler who appeared at the Tokyo show on the network in the East, with Lesnar making his first appearance since WrestleMania in a ring, and having a dominant performance in the match at, uh, in Tokyo on the WWE Network? We need to know the answers to these questions. Now, because I'm choosing uh, Seth Rollins over Brock Lesnar, that does not mean that 
that I'm not a Brock Lesnar fan because I am a huge Brock Lesnar fan. I am more of a Brock Lesnar fan now over the last couple of years since Lesnar's return in 2012 and more of a fan of the second half of his career than I was the first half of his career when we're talking about retro Brock Lesnar because I think he's more fun to watch. And I respect how Lesnar is not afraid of anybody and he'll fight against anybody. It doesn't matter if it's the big show, the Undertaker, Brock Lesnar is there. Newcomers, he takes on everybody in a 20 by 20 foot ring and puts off dominant performances just as he did in the UFC carrying it over from the first half of his wrestling career. He tried to hand a football, wasn't successful with that, and realized he was better of a fighter no matter if it was wrestling or with the UFC. And I respect that about Brock Lesnar. And more so, I respect about Brock Lesnar how he's not afraid to mix it up in the ring against newcomers, legends. He's not afraid of anybody. And he'll get down and dirty whenever he needs to get down and dirty or wants to get down and dirty. And that's what I respect about Brock Lesnar. No matter if he's a fan favorite or a heel, no matter what card he plays, you can't help but give him the benefit of the doubt and respect everything that he does. And you know, in the segments that we see between Lesnar and Seth Rollins over the last number of weeks, I mean, Lesnar dominates against Seth Rollins. Seeing Lesnar get su or uh, Seth Rollins getting suplexed by Brock Lesnar, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous how Seth Rollins takes these suplexes and how Lesnar just flicks him from one side of the ring to the other. He's literally throwing him around, and it's absolutely pointless to have this match. On paper, the tail of the tape, if you're actually to compare the tail of the tape and statistics between these two uh, champions and challengers, uh, it's really ridiculous and it's nothing more than a mismatch and I think that because of these statistics being presented that we have uh, for Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar, this match probably shouldn't even be happening and we should be promoting a match between Brock Lesnar and this New Japan wrestler who recently debuted in Tokyo on the network because the statistics between Brock Lesnar and this international wrestler are far more impressive than what it is with uh, Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar when you look at the tail of the tape. The tail of the tape in the way of statistics is truly uh, frightening, and should we be having this match really at WWE Battleground, or should a far more effective and far more appealing main event for Battleground be being promoted heading down the road to SummerSlam, the Heat Wave Tour, and the road to SummerSlam as we get closer to the biggest event of SummerSlam second to WrestleMania. This is going to be a really big summer for WWE, I think, and I think it's now is the time to be a wrestling fan. If you have an opinion on Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins, you can give it to me on our Facebook page at HGW Entertainment, on Twitter is where you can follow our conversation at Jonathan Clark one and on our channel at Jonathan Clark 22 is where you can leave it for me in the comments. I'd love to know what your opinion is and your file is on Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. I have said over the last number of weeks I'm favoring Brock Lesnar going into this match and now I've changed all of a sudden to Seth Rollins and I'm going back and forth between the two because the more that I compare the tail of the tape statistics with 